Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Visiting a garden is a great way to get ideas on what to plant, try new varieties, or just be inspired. In the case of historic gardens, you can learn how they've evolved and learn about the life and culture of that garden period. So today we're going to get a sampling of some New England gardens that you might like to visit. And here to guide us on this tour is our frequent contributor, UVM Extension Horticulturist, Leonard Perry. Welcome. Good to be back. So where are we going to be touring today? Okay, we're going to be going to Boston for a few minutes and uh, southern New Hampshire. Last year I led a tour, as I do each year, um, overnight tour, and it's something that started years ago in collaboration with the King's Garden at Fort Ticonderoga. Recent years we've added uh, a person a lot of people know in the area, Charlie Nardozzi, who does TV and radio mm -hmm. and, and uh, speaking. And uh, so we did uh, three days down around the Boston area in southern New Hampshire. And we're going to start this morning in southern New Hampshire? Uh, that's where we'll start. And we visited a couple of really different gardens, starting at Pleasant View. This is actually a wholesale grower, uh, provides a lot of our plants for the Burlington Waterfront Gardens, which we have. Um, they are actually also the growers of the proven winners, proven selections, and so they display all of these. Now this is a wholesale grower, so not usually open to the public, but they do have an open house each August and um, th where they put on a great display. They try all, all these new varieties in the ground, in pots, and in hanging baskets to see how they'll do. So here are some of the new ones, and again, we have some of those right at our uh, waterfront gardens. Uh, this is one in particular I, I liked, uh, fireworks fountain grass, bright red, and it's you know just a low grass, about a foot and a half high, but you can see plants like this all around the gardens get some great ideas on some of the newest varieties, as we did on our tour last year. They also have perennials in their program now, so here are some of the new perennials, just mast and beds, so making a nice border. I thought this was a neat idea, making a window frame like you can do at home. <laughs> out of, you have some leftover lumber, paint it nice, and then put a window box on it. So they were actually displaying, you know, how you can combine colors like uh, some of those chartreuse colors with the colors there. So think about that, you know, when you're putting together window boxes or in this case kind of echoing that orange uh, with the orange of the window box with the flowers there and contrasting the purple. So some of the newer varieties, but uh, good ideas on how you can combine these shade plants. Uh, a lot of some nice Nice ones for that and a little lining the walk there with that uh, euphorbia, uh, diamond frost, one of those new euphorbia spurges, um, but just you can get some ideas there. I thought this was nice, just uh, solid color. There's that fountain uh, grass, that fireworks in the middle for that bright red, but then pinks all around it, various pinks, whether it be verbenas or petunias. Um, so that's a, a neat idea you can do, just massing, or purples in this case with the ageratum, the floss flower in the foreground, angelonia, uh, often called summer snapdragon, and then some perennial grasses in the background. So very simple for a nice narrow area, what you could do there at Pleasant View Gardens. Um, here's a wall, if you have a wall, a narrow path, you know, in between a house, say, and a path. Here's what you can do, and there's some pots, and they even have hanging along the top with a little drip irrigation system with petunias. So you can get some ideas how to deal with some of these different spaces, and small spaces are popular now, small space gardens, so they give ideas on that with containers around the patio and some plantings, uh, so you can get ideas on those. And then I thought that was pretty neat with all these different containers raised up. You can, I like that. You can get more ideas and, and actually some of these accessories, you can get a lot of hangers now. So a lot of ways to kind of suspend these containers, hang them or, or put them up in the air. So near Loud, New Hampshire, uh, down near Concord, uh, this is uh, Pleasant View Gardens. And then we <clears throat> went on to um, the All America Selections Display Garden mm -hmm. at Prescott Park in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Right down, that's the uh, harbor right in the background. And this is similar to our display garden. We Again, I mentioned at the Burlington Waterfront. Um, they've had this one for years and it's right downtown. And not only do they have the new varieties and a lot of these well labeled, um, similar to us, they have a bit more extensive down there than, than we do. And, but then they have this wonderful display garden. You can walk through, very serene and uh, just a lovely setting down in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. That's terrific. And so it um, looks like you, you spent some time there and uh, 
tours? Yeah, we, we did, and um, that actually been fortunate over the years uh, to go to Portsmouth a lot. It's just a wonderful area right on the harbor, beautiful. You can sit and watch the boats, and mm -hmm. they have summer arts events, a lot of shopping and food, and right across the street, it's actually interesting, right downtown, it's a very historic city, very old, uh, is Strawberry Bank, yep. and it's actually spelled that way. That's the old <laughs> spelling, you know, not a misspelling, uh, right down in Portsmouth. Now, that used to be part of the harbor years ago. They filled it in, made this lawn, and it's kind of like a uh, Shelburne Museum where they brought in all these old houses from different periods. You can see in the background. We'll take a look at a few of those, and they've created the gardens around them, too. Now, uh, this is a Victorian garden um, there at uh, the Goodwin Mansion, mm -hmm. and very extensive, and uh, as you see, big flowers, these grassy things, and so the plants are very uh, appropriate for the period of a Victorian time. A lot of circular beds. Here you see the elephant ears in, in the center. Sometimes you'll see a fountain kind of going up. Very Victorian, some of the old tools out there. Uh, but it's a really good idea, to, a place to get ideas. You know, mm -hmm. here's an amaranth, a cannas, uh, the purple heart in the uh, foreground or down in the uh, lower part. So just some neat little ideas you could take home, you know, if you, especially if you have an older home. Uh, raised bed here, an older greenhouse over 100 years old with some great new neat plants in that here at Strawberry Bank. And here's a typical street. Uh, and you can walk some of these streets they've recreated like you might see, you know, in the past with just the gravel and these old homes. You can tour the homes from various periods and they have interpreters in those. It's just a wonderful place to spend some time. Uh, this is an example of the Shapiro Garden. The Shapiro House was one of an actual, of an early 20th century Russian immigrant. Mm, and they okay. have an interpreter in there dressed, uh, as, you know, as Miss <laughs> Shapiro and giving the history and you can see the furnishings inside, but outside you can see the laundry, peaches, a lot of uh, vegetables. Um, here you see a lot of vegetables in the Victory Garden from World War II, a very sample of that um, that were so popular then. Going way back to 17th century, the Sherburne Garden, um, again it was all about either plants for medicinal or um, you know, food plants and not a whole lot of bright colors back then. Um, jumping ahead, here is food plants from this century, the mm -hmm. community garden. These are actually locals that come in, have these garden plots and, and grow uh, plants there. So kind of a nice juxtaposition. And then a wonderful herb garden, the local herb societies put together and you can walk through this entrance and go inside and see just any manner of herbs that you can see very well labeled and get some really nice ideas for just a small space and some neat herbs you could grow at home too. That's great. It's very interesting to see how the gardens have changed over the years. Yeah, it's in all right next to each other. You know, you can just go see one and see the other, and um, in, in addition to the architecture there, too. And so where was the next place you went? Okay, so um, next we went down closer to Boston, mm -hmm. and we actually saw the Glen Magna, which is another historic property. Um, and this is in Danvers, and it's a very typical home of the wealthy back, you know, a century or more ago, a couple centuries ago, early 1800s, of the North Shore of Boston, where they'd escape in the summer, you know, mm -hmm. to a nice uh, weekend or summer home. Yeah. So here's an example of this. It's run by the Danvers Historic Society. It's very popular for weddings, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah. But that, that was looking at the house from the back. This is from the house looking back out to a little summer uh, building, but some real, real nice gardens, especially especially a, a Victorian period and early 20th century, they planted a lot of specimen plants and trees there. So there's some, some of those surviving that are just very nice uh, to see, you know, 100-year-old plants. But they have a very pretty perennial garden there. Uh, again, trying to recreate with some of the plants of that period. Um, they can walk through a little formal area with a little water feature in it. Again, you know, perhaps, you know, more of the Victorian period. They have a couple of these pergolas and mm -hmm. one with wisteria on it, which uh, this time of year would be very nice. And this is a historic landmark there. It's a summer house in the back of the property that was uh, actually dates from the late 1700s, but it was actually brought here in the around uh, uh, 1900. So uh, that's a real nice thing to see, too. And you can go up on top and get a view of the rose garden there at Glen Magna. That's beautiful. And so what, what do we have coming up next? Okay, so uh, from there, that was kind of the, um, we saw some of the historic um, gardens. Mm -hmm. So um, we went to a couple other uh, places. I didn't bring pictures of, but Wilson Farms in Lexington, uh, Mass, was a real good example of a uh, farm market. It's a wonderful place to visit. They actually grow there. And then the Arnold Arboretum near Boston uh, is a great one for um, trees, and that um, dates back to the uh, mid to late 1800s. 
1800s when a lot of the original plants came to this country uh, from the explorers and some of the early directors would bring them there. So some of the plants we have in landscapes, you can see the original plants that were brought to this country no there. So that's pretty neat for uh, if you're into gardening that's and amazing. trees. But it's a wonderful place to just walk around. It's in Jamaica Plain, right down Boston, but this uh, beautiful landscape. So, and then we went, uh, finished up here at Tower Hill Botanic Garden in Boylston, Mass. Mm -hmm. Now this is a lot younger, it's only a couple decades old. Um, and this was set up by the Mass, or the Worcester Historical uh, so or Garden Society, um, Horticulture Society, and um, this is their orangery, if you will, where they put the tender plants and bring them out in summer. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot of, you know, conservatory uh, type plants inside, but it's just a wonderful feature. And then outside they have a lot of uh, raised beds with more special plants, and uh, so that's proud. And they have a nice building there with gift shop and cafe. Um, and again, Boylston. It's about a. This is about an hour west of Boston, mm -hmm. um, and it's just lovely setting up in the hills with some nice views. And outside that orangery area, they have a fairly extensive garden here, where they have a lot of new varieties. They have ones botanically arranged by families. You know, a systematic type garden. Um, and some statuary throughout the garden, but just wonderful to get some ideas on not only new plants, but new plant combinations. And this is one I just thought was pretty neat. This uh, daylily against a Russian sage. I thought that was just so striking. That's a good and idea. Again, something very simple. These, you go to these big <laughs> gardens, but take a little simple idea like that and bring it home. So uh, that was really a nice feature. So you can see a lot of that example. And the vegetable garden was kind of small, but they had some really neat uh, structures there to uh, have the beans climb on. They're either made of wood, you see in the back, mm -hmm. bright, painted bright green. Uh, so you can take something that's very simple and then paint it and make it really Really attractive, and since you know half the year you won't see much on it until the plants get going. <laughs> True. And they even had some of the iron rebar rods and you know kind of tied together and, and made a frame of that, and that with all the big kale and cabbage in the foreground, real nice contrast with that. And then the, um, here's a pergola, and with uh, hanging baskets uh, coming down, and, and just a lovely place to walk in the summer, and, and views back to the gardens on one side and, and down on the other. And here's a view back. You can walk through this area with a bit of lawn and shrubs, and so you see a lot of newer shrubs, and again, very well labeled and, and up-to-date names. And then we have, um, you know, from that same pergola looking down a sunken garden, some lovely steps and low water feature down there. And one of the things that is kind of special and different is this heirloom apple orchard. Many varieties. Here's an example, American Beauty, dating back to 1854. So if you want to see some really old varieties, go there in the, <laughs> in the fall, September. Uh, we were there uh, late um, July, and you know, here's we already had some apples uh, coming on there. And container plantings. Here's one with some um, plants you may not think about. You know, a woody plant, and you can buy a lot more of these miniature plants, uh, heathers, and uh, sedum, some perennials, so you can see some uh, plants like that. Or, in the case, uh, succulents are still very popular now. Right. You see a lot of those around. Um, you can make a container like this. Now, these probably would have to be brought in because they wouldn't <laughs> take our winners up here. But how nice here. would we have that but in your yeah, house? You could have a little container and bring it in and, and that agave in there. And here's the bed that that was in, and just like a southwest, just right, <laughs> right there in Massachusetts, up in New England. So it's kind of cool to, to see that. Now, you mentioned a, a new tour in the summer of 2014. Where will you be going? Okay, this year uh, we'll have a another one of these tours, July 28th and 29th, mm -hmm. to the Hudson Valley. Now, Ooh. 2013, National Geographic said this is one of the places to see in the world, which I thought was pretty special. Wow. So we'll be going there for a couple days, again, in uh, collaboration with the King's Garden at Fort Ticonderoga and Charlie Nardozzi. And one of the nice things is uh, they have us, as well as uh, research associates, some may remember from the show, Sarah Kingsley Richards is uh, coming along, uh, who's very knowledgeable about the fruits and the pests and diseases. We're there for two days. And Answering questions like a tour we're giving, you know, in a course mm -hmm. on the bus for a traveling yes. course, you know. Yet we're seeing gardens like Samuel Morse's um, home and gardens, inventor of the telegraph, a lot of famous people up and down the Hudson Valley, of course. And uh, of course, we uh, have all our internet and communications these days, telephone going, tracing back to him, really, starting with that. Uh, Frank Cabot, the founder of the Garden Conservancy, lovely gardens, a famous landscape architect of the last century, Beatrix. 
Farron, one of her best surviving gardens, Belfield. We'll be having a group dinner. We'll be going to the largest farm stand, Adams uh, Bear Acre Farms in the area. So it um, should be a real fun tour. Real and, packed tour. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately for a lot of people, it is filling up very fast. So we should How can be, people get details so on that? So you can go to my, my website, mm -hmm. Perry's Perennials. Um, Dot info and look for the link on that. You can uh, print out the form. You can also get our uh, contact information there and maybe best to even email to see if we still have spots. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.